Greetings viewers, in today's class we will learn what uh, the different things in control systems mean like race time, peak time, delay time, settling time, etc. So when you actually look at a transfer function, be it a first order or a second order, you can find it in a specific form and from that you need to obtain different parameters you want. Say you have a race time, delay time, we'll have a look at that. I'll solve an easy equation first and then we'll go to complex ones. Let me take the first one which is already in the required form. So my question is um, g of f. Let me directly take c of s by r of s. This is the closed loop transfer function. I'm already taking a closed loop transfer function, so I need not modify it to make it into a closed loop. I'm taking a closed loop. I'm not taking an open loop transfer function. Keep that in mind. So I'm taking a closed loop transfer function, which is C of S by R of S is equal to um, 7 by S square plus 4s, let me take this as 9, and I'll take this as 12s plus um, 10. So this is my closed loop transfer function. Now, all you need to uh, obtain, for if you want to find out different times, is you need to put, write this down in a specific form. Every transfer function of a second order, you can write it in the form of C of S by R of S is equal to omega omega n square by S square plus 2 omega n zeta plus k. That's a constant. So now if you look at the above transfer function, you can easily say that omega n square is 9. So omega n is equal to 3. Omega n is equal to 3. So from this, you can obtain the value of eta, zeta. So zeta is another Greek alphabet. And in our case, it is the uh, natural frequency. It is the undamped natural frequency. So 2 omega n eta is equal to 12. So 2 omega n eta is equal to 12. 6 omega n is 3 so 1 is a 2 is a so eta is equal to 2 and omega n is eta is equal to 2 and omega n is equal to 3 so now here comes uh, how to find out omega d and all those things so now first of all omega d omega d is equal to omega n into root over 1 minus zeta square so which is equal to omega n value is 3 and I write it as 1 minus 2 square All right, I write it as uh, 1 minus 2 square so usually the damping ratio is less than 1 I'll explain you the different uh, curves and how they are going to come depending upon the ratios. But anyways, you're going to substitute that in this. But uh, for the simplification of the calculation, let me assume that I got a zero value less than 1. Let me assume that I got a 0 0.5. Let me assume, assume. So, point, uh, think it's 0 0.25. And then it is uh, 3 into root over 0.75. That is omega d. So now, your there is the different parameters you're going to look at when you're calculating uh, the time parameters, the time domain specifications. Time domain specifications, you call them. So there is peak time. 
TP. Rise time. Rise time TR. Percentage MP, which is the percentage of the peak overshoot. You graph, you graph. I'll I'll explain it different times. Just to hold hold on for a second. This is the rise time, and uh, then you got settling time, TS. So these are the different parameters. So these are the different time domain specifications you need to calculate when you're given a transfer function. So let me say that our transfer we have so to calculate these things you need zeta value and omega n value. If you have these two values, it's enough. So now the formula to calculate the peak time TP is any guesses? I told you the concept before. It is pi by omega d. And what is omega d? I already told you what omega d is. Omega d is omega n into root over, which is also equal to omega n into root over 1 minus zeta square. This is zeta my zeta square. So omega n value is 3. Zeta square value, whatever zeta square value you get, you're going to substitute here. And then pi is 3.14. And in this way, you're going to get the peak time. Peak time. And rise time is actually a slight change of uh, what uh, the peak time is. It is, so TR is pi minus theta by omega d. It is pi minus theta by omega d. So, you might ask me what this theta is. Theta is nothing but theta is nothing but this. It's nothing but 1 minus zeta squared by zeta, tan inverse, or 1 minus zeta squared by zeta. So, and that is in radians. And coming to percentage of the peak overshoot, it is e power minus pi eta, e power minus pi eta by 1 minus eta squared under the root. So this is percentage of the peak overshoot. So you're going to use these formulas to calculate the different time domain specifications for a given transfer function. So in the next, in the next video, we'll be solving an example and we'll be solving a genuine example where we'll get the eta value less than 1. And now let me just tell you how different systems have different graphs and what these peak time, rise time and all this stuff actually is. So, this is my axis, and the response of a transfer function happens to be like this. This is C of T. And this is T. So, this is 1, which is actually considered to be the peak value. And this is 0.5. The time taken, the time taken, to reach half, half of the actual height is called this time. That time is called 
delay time. The time taken by the graph to reach half its height is called delay time. And the time taken by the graph to reach its complete height is peak time. And the time taken, let me uh, redraw it a bit. The time taken by that to reach to almost 2 to 5 percent difference. And there is 2 to 5 percent difference between the actual height which is supposed to, to, which is supposed to attain and when it actually settles, keeps settling. That is called settling time. So in this way, you have different specifications, different time domain specifications and you can obtain these when the transfer function is given to you. So I've already given you the formulas of how to calculate this stuff. Now in my next video, we'll be solving a real-time example.